Our vision from day one of this van build has been to have a walkable solar roof deck. To me, this is a little bit insane. I can just kind of walk my filthy dogs all over these bad boys. What is up guys? 70 Savage here, coming at you today with another van build video. Today we are finally gonna be installing our solar panels on our brand new roof rack. I wanna take this opportunity not just to show you guys how I'm going to install my specific panels on my specific van, but to give you guys the rundown on how to install solar on a van in general. So let's go ahead and get started. The most common question that I get about solar is how much solar do I need on my van build? At the end of the day, my answer to that is really simple as much as you can possibly fit onto your van. In fact, I actually designed the roof of this van with the max air fans to be split as far apart so that I had as much surface area as possible to mount solar panels. You wanna think about that when you're designing your van. There are really two different types of solar panels that you can consider for your van build. The first one are the fully rigid solar panels and the second one are the flexible solar panels. On my last van build, I did use the rigid ones and I built a nice little 80-20 roof rack. It worked perfectly. But with the flexible ones, I've seen people directly glue them to the roof of the van. It seems like a decent solution. I have heard, however, that the rigid ones tend to be more efficient panels than the flexible ones. And whether you go rigid or flexible, you're gonna wanna stick with the monocrystalline solar panels. For this van build, however, we are not gonna go with either of those solutions. I think I found the best possible option for solar panels on a van, and they are walkable, semi-flexible solar panels. Let me go ahead and show you guys. So right here, I have 450 watt walkable solar panels. And when I say walkable, I literally mean you can walk all over these things. As you might imagine, these aren't the cheapest solution. That being said, the tech is still really new. I bought these from custommarineproducts.com. I'll put a link to them in the description below. Full disclosure, after I decided these are what I wanted, I reached out to them and they gave me a very steep discount in exchange for making this video. Perks of being a YouTuber. I wanna give a shout out to Tom, who was incredibly patient waiting for me to get my roof rack custom built and installed. It took eight months since they've shipped me these panels. Let's go ahead and get them mounted on top of the van. By the way, I am aware that there are already companies doing walkable solar roof decks like Tiny Watt Solar, and I think that's a really cool solution. I just wanted to have a more rugged off-road looking roof rack and use modular, replaceable, solar panels all right so we got the panels lifted on top of the van kind of insane right now to just be walking up here we are going to go ahead and mount these to the roof rack real quick all right we got them mounted by basically putting quarter inch bolts all along this side here for each panel and then we use stainless steel zip ties on this side so now comes time for another challenging decision that you're also going to have to make if you want to put solar on your roof and that is whether to string the solar panels in series or in parallel. If you string your solar panels in series, that basically makes the panels more efficient. The downside with that is that if you get partial shade on one of the panels, it knocks out your whole solar array. On the flip side, if you wire your panels in parallel, it does reduce the efficiency slightly, but if you get shade on one of your panels, then the rest of them still generate electricity. Most of the time, I just go for stringing them in parallel. It's just like one less thing to think about when you're parking your van. That being said, for this, we cannot just do straight parallel connections because since we have four panels, there would be too much amperage going through the wires, specifically these wires that are connected directly to the solar panels themselves. So what we're gonna do, since we always take the most complicated route we possibly can, or at least that's what it seems, is do a combination of both parallel and series. I'll put a wiring diagram on the screen right now for how we are actually going to string these things up. And then as for the connectors, we're using what are called MC4 connectors. They're these great waterproof connectors that are like perfect for stringing up solar panels. I'll put a link to this kit and the MC4 connectors in the description below. Okay, so this looks like a bit of a mess because it kind of is. So we used our basic two to one connectors here. We have the 
30 amp fuses, one on each of the series arrays. And then back here, I simply used these metal barrel connectors. I used a super simple anvil style crimper, stuck the six gauge into one side, folded over the 10 gauge and stuck that into the other side and then just hammered it down. Then I put a little heat shrink on the outside and it turned out really good. These big, thick six gauge wires basically go directly down through the roof using my new favorite roof glands. They look really nice. They're perfectly watertight. I'll put a link to those in the description below. I'm going to organize all these right now. And this is what it looks like after all of the wires are cleaned up. Pretty darn stoked with how this thing turned out. I can just kind of walk my filthy dogs all over these bad boys. And on that note, it is time for us to go inside the van and finish steps two, three, and four of the solar install. Okay, so the last three steps that we need to do in order to get the power from the solar panels into the battery bank are connect the solar powers to the solar controller as step number one. Then we gotta attach the output of the solar controller to a switch, which is step number two. And then we gotta connect the results of that to our battery bank, which will make the thing go full circle and we will be good to go. So I've torn apart this cabinet right here. This is where my microwave normally sits. Behind that is where we keep a couple of electronic doohickeys one of which is our solar controller. As for which solar controller you should buy, I strongly recommend just going with the Victron one and basically just go to their website and find the size that you need for the amount of solar wattage that you have. This 100 slash 50 is the controller that goes up to 600 watts, which is exactly what we have. So this is the controller that I bought. They have all different sizes of MPPT controllers and all you need is one that's big enough or can support the amount of wattage you have on your roof. So as for how we're gonna hook this thing up, it is incredibly simple. There are just four connections right here. You have the plus and minus from our solar panels, which is the input to the solar controller. And then you have the plus and minus as the output that go to our batteries. Because after all, that's the purpose of this solar controller is to take the solar energy and make it worthy of charging the batteries. The only gotcha here is that we are going to put a breaker on both the input side and the output side of the solar controller. So here I have a 60 and a 50 amp. I think it'd probably be better just to have 50 amps on both sides. This is what I had in my box O electronic stuff. Let's hook that up right now and get it all nice and polished. So we have the four wires going in and out of our solar controller. So now it is time to embark on the next steps, the final two steps. I'm gonna do that real quick and then show you guys the results. All right, that was a little bit of a sweaty endeavor. It's starting to get hot out here in Tahoe, but we did finish the wiring. This right here is the positive from the solar controller, which goes up to our on and off switch for the solar panels. Then on the other side of the switch, the wire comes down and attaches to the positive bus bar, basically attaching directly to the battery bank. Our ground wire, instead of going to a switch, just comes directly to the negative bus bar of our battery system. And then I found this little doohickey right here, which is a wireless Bluetooth temperature sensor. I just stuck it to the outside of the battery bank here. This connects wirelessly via Bluetooth all the way up to our solar controller and prevents it from dishing out charge into the batteries below 32 degrees because that will damage the batteries. I used six gauge wire for all of the solar panel connections. I use these terminal connectors on any large gauge wire. This one actually came with the six gauge wire. I'll put a link to that package in the description below. And then when you do your connections right, this is what they come out looking like. You have the metal lug right here, which has been crimped down with a little bit of heat shrink over it. And I guess that leaves us with only one thing left to do. And that is finally test out the entire system. Let's see how it goes. Let's go ahead and open the app that connects to our solar controller to see how much power we're generating. And the important question of whether or not our solar panels are working at all is definitely a yes. It did generate up to 478 watts of power, I believe, which is a ton of power from a 600 watt panel array. And with that, we have completed this entire project. In fact, we may have just completed the entire van, at least all the things that are needed for it to operate. There's still a couple more small projects and videos I'm going to upload. One of those things is going to be adding Starlink to the van. So if you want to see that video or you want to see my travels in this beast of an adventure van, slap the subscribe button below. Hope that you guys enjoyed this video, especially if you made it this far. I know only the true fans watch 
the whole vid. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.